All right, so first, this video is not on how to actually do densities. This isn't how to run the gauge or anything like that. Um, I'm gonna assume you already know how to do that or you've been taught that by someone else. Or if you don't know how to do that, I know there's other videos out there, so I'm not gonna remake one that's, that's out there plenty of times. This is more of the science behind densities and how it works and what we're looking for as fuel technicians. Um, I've been doing this for about 10 years. I've worked at a couple different labs and there always seems to be one or two people that don't quite grasp the concept of how densities work or what we're looking for, um, the science behind it, if you will. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at a couple different types of soils real quick and just, uh, and, and you know, this is just a, a quick little uh, uh, a rant, if you will. There's no visuals or anything, but if you look at, so, so here in San Antonio, uh, a lot of the select fill that we test, it's crushed limestone base. A base material I'm not sure if they have crushed limestone around the entire country or what other what, what select fills they use in another part of the country but looking at crushed limestone base basically what it is is it's limestone that they crush down into smaller pieces uh, that they have that meets a certain gradation certain amount of you know three eighths rock certain amount of quarter inch rock certain amount of uh, of of aggregate or fines retained on the quarter, on the number four, on the 50, on the 200, etc. But it's all rock. It's crushed down. Some of it's crushed down so fine that it gets pulverized into dust. Um, but when you when you fill a, a, a cubic foot, that's what we're looking for, a cubic foot. Uh, a cubic foot is basically a box. If you can imagine a box that's 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches all the way around, that's a cubic foot. You fill that with base as tight as you can, and it's gonna weigh about 135 pounds. Okay, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but typically a, a good base is gonna be about 135 pounds. Now, depending on what, uh, if you use a modified proctor or a, a, a standard proctor, 1557 versus 698, that can change, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not gonna get into those minor details. I, uh, I'm gonna say 135 just for an example here. Okay, it's gonna weigh 135 pounds. Now, it's gonna need moisture in there. Moisture is gonna do two things. Moisture serves as two purposes, or the amount of moisture is gonna be determined by two things when you add moisture to a, to a soil. Okay, some of that moisture is gonna get absorbed by the, by the soil, and then the, some of that moisture is gonna be used as a binder. It's gonna hold the soil together, right? If you get, a, if you get some dry soil and you try to make a, 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 a ball out of it and you squeeze it in your fist and then you open your fist, it's just gonna fall apart because there's no binder. There's no moisture holding that together. So you gotta add some moisture to that. Okay, you have to, have, you have to add enough so that it, it, it holds it together, but you can't add too much because then it just becomes a sloppy mess. Okay, so typically for a base material, you're looking at about 5%. Again, I've seen some as low as three and a half. I've seen some as high as seven. It all depends on, 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 on the 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 quality the aggregate how much of it is pulverized how much of it stays solid aggregates etc but anyway a base you're looking at 135 at five typically that's a, that's a good rule of thumb really high dry density of 135 really low moisture of five percent okay on the opposite end of the spectrum we look like at a at a dark brown fat clay okay this is a, some people call it like a gumbo looking stuff um, it's, it's almost like a topsoil. If you were to go dig a hole in your yard, that's, that's typically the stuff they put on top. Um, that stuff's very light, okay? When you fill a, 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 a cubic foot box, again, one foot by one foot by one foot, and you fill it with dark brown fat clay, you're looking at about, let's say 90 pounds, okay? I've seen some in the high 80s, I've seen some closer to 100, but this is just, this is just basically a box of clay, okay? There's no aggregate in it, there's no sand in it, there's no nothing, it's just that clay. About 90 pounds now that stuff it's gonna take a whole lot more moisture uh, again typically rule of thumb probably about 25% moisture okay I've seen some a little bit lower I've seen some a little bit higher I'm gonna go at 25 so if you think about it you have 90 pounds of clay a quarter of that or 25% same thing is moisture so half of 90 is 45 half of 45 is 22 and a half so you need 22.5 pounds of water of moisture inside that cubic foot to hold it all together okay a lot of it's going to get absorbed that's why you need uh um so much so much moisture so much water because there's no aggregate in there okay aggregate doesn't aggregate aka rock gravel 
things like that, that doesn't absorb the moisture. It's the clay that does. That's why if you have a box of just clay, it's gonna take so much moisture. Again, you need enough to it holds together, but you can't put too much because then it turns sloppy. But that's up to the dirt guys to, to figure out how much is, is too much, but not enough. We're just there to test it. Now, some little factors that, that, that are gonna change that. Okay, if you have a dark brown clay, a dark brown fat clay, but that has some gravel in it, now that's gonna change things because now it's gonna weigh more than 90 pounds because that gravel is gonna make it heavier. How much heavier? Well, it depends on how much gravel you have. Um, let's say you have some gravel and it changes that uh, weight from 90 pounds to 100 pounds because you added gravel, it makes it a little bit heavier. Well, because your weight goes up, the moisture required of that 25 is gonna go down. As one goes up, the other one goes down. So if you have a dark brown fat clay with gravel, or a gravelly dark brown fat clay, depends depends on your sample description, that's gonna change things. Um, if it's at 100 pounds instead of 90, instead of 25, it might be at, let's say 17. So now your proctor is gonna call for 100 at 17 versus 90 at 25. Again, one goes up, the other one goes down. Um, anything that's in that sample is gonna affect it. Um, maybe you have sand and gravel, maybe you have just sand maybe you have just gravel maybe you have a lot of gravel there is a difference between uh, a gravelly sandy clay versus a sandy a sandy gravelly clay um, which one does it have more of when, when, when you give a proc when you give a soil description you go by its main uh, what's the word I'm looking for it, its main component if it's mostly gravel and then some sand and then some clay then you have a gravelly sandy clay if it's mostly sand and then gravel and then clay, then you have a sandy gravelly clay. But you don't, as a field tech, you don't have to worry about that. Hopefully your lab does a good job of, 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 of giving it a good description when, when, uh, when they run the, when they run the tests on it, the PI and the liquid limit and all that other stuff. So when they provide you the moisture, sorry, when they provide you the sample description, hopefully they give you a good description. If you're the guy in the lab, that, that actually describes this, it's very important for us fuel techs to know what it is. That way, when you look at the material and you actually physically stand on it to test it, you can say, oh, this is the gravelly sandy clay. Now, um, I'm gonna make a second video also about uh, things that change out in the field so that this one video is not so long. Um, but that's kind of how densities work. You have your dry density and you have your moisture. Now, when you combine your dry density and your moisture together, that gives you your wet density. Um, but your dry density and your moisture as one goes up the other one goes down depending on what's in your soil depending on if you're gonna you're using a select fill versus uh, a general fill versus uh, um, You know, what are you using for backfill things like that? There, there's all these different things that happens in, inside these soils that are gonna that are gonna give it different uh, different character uh, that have different characteristics that's gonna make it have different dry densities and different moistures that's kind of how that works um but i'm gonna i'm gonna hit the stop button on this one and then i'm gonna uh i'll uh, post a second video also on how to uh on some of the factors that we that we deal with as field ticks out in the field